Okay, so for the last section for today, we're just going to cover some basic class details, answer some general questions. Um, feel free to ask any other questions you have through Slack or through email. I will answer. I'm a very quick responder typically, um, especially through Slack because I have notifications that show up and I have to get rid of the notifications or else I'll just have this like um, red button on my dock and I want to get rid of it. So I will talk to you quickly to get rid of that notification button. Um, so. The plan for the class, here's kind of the general map. This is on the class website. If you go to um, the, the website for the class and scroll down a bit, you'll see the same outline here. Um, so what we're going to do is at the beginning, we'll start talking about this idea of evaluation and causation, um, kind of an expansion of what we just talked about in the previous section, um, where we'll, we'll talk about how um, you can have how you connect the theory of your program to the implementation of the program, and then how you can measure the outcomes of the program. Um, so we'll learn how to draw logic models and how to figure out how programs work internally, how to measure things correctly. This is a very tricky thing, um, because if you're trying to measure outcomes like reduction in poverty, how are you going to measure that effectively? What does that actually look like um, in a data set? How do you know if poverty has been reduced? Um, and then we'll talk about DAGs and this idea of potential outcomes, which is a way of measuring um, causal stories and, and figuring out causation at a statistical level. Um, while we're doing this, we're going to do at the same time, um, we'll learn how to use R and something called the tidyverse. The reason I'm having you learn R in this class, um, there's actually two reasons. Um, the first is that it's free. Um, and I really want you to be able to do this stuff after you graduate and lose access to Stata or SPSS or other statistical programs, um, especially because most of you are going to be working in the public sector or the nonprofit sector. And if you show up as the one person who knows how to do evaluation in a small nonprofit, they're not going to be able to afford Stata and you won't be able to do stuff. Um, and so I want you to be able to do this stuff. Um, what I've found since I've been teaching R and statistics and program evaluation for the past few years is I still have students um, emailing me with questions about R stuff, and I'm happy to answer after you're all done with this class um, because they're still doing this stuff. Um, just a couple weeks ago, I had a former student that works for a police department in Utah, um, and she's trying to um, develop a new impact evaluation for one of their new programs, and um, she was able to, to write a, a complete script um, using simulated fake data because they hadn't finished collecting the data yet. Um, and she got help from me, like helping, I helped her design a few different things to tweak it. Um, and then as soon as she got the real data, she just had to plug it into her script and she had like results and it was amazing. Um, you can do this kind of stuff with R after graduation. So that, that's why I'm having you do this. Um, especially because if you remember DJ Patil's um, forum um, address, his whole point was that you can't have a radical technology unless it is accessible by everybody. Locking away statistical knowledge and fun functions that figure out causation um, in Stata and SPSS is not accessible by everybody. R is. And so that's why I'm having you do it. If you never want to use R after this class and go back to Stata, cool, do it. If you really just want to use Stata for this class, Neat, I, that works. You can you can answer most of the questions in the problem sets um, using just Stata. Um, the functions that are developed for some of the fancier econometrics things like regression discontinuity, um, those exist for both R and Stata. You can still do Stata for that. Um, but I would recommend, even if you're familiar with other packages, I would recommend focusing on R um, just so you can have that extra tool in your tool belt for statistics. So do that. I would recommend it. Um, so we'll be doing this at the same time, doing our stuff and this evaluation stuff. Then after the first month, month-ish of the semester, we'll move on to the core tools and methods for determining causation. Um, this is where we'll talk about some econometrics techniques like difference and differences, regression discontinuity, instrumental variables, um, which is um, what economists use to measure um, causation. We'll also talk about matching um, and other ways of, of isolating those paths in DAGs. And we'll be able to talk all about different ways of, of proving causation or arguing for causation. And then the last section of the class, we'll be talking about applied evaluation. 
um, which is how to um, do the communication aspect of this. So if you remember from the first section of this um, lecture, um, this is all just stats, but we care about the data science side, which is finding insights in the data and then communicating those insights to other people um, and hopefully changing the world as a result of the, the insights that we found. And so for the last, the last section of the class, we'll be talking about how to actually do that and how to um, run evaluations well. Um, the textbooks that we're using, there are three. We're not going to use every single page in all of them. We'll use different chunks of them. Um, two of them are free. Um, the World Bank Impact Evaluation book is free. And this Causal Inference Mixtape is free. Um, this one is a lot mathier than any of the others, um, but it's still helpful. It has Stata code in it, if you're familiar with Stata. There is a new version. Um, this is version 1.7. He has a print version that should be published in like December or January of um, 2020 or 2021 um, from, I think, Princeton University Press. It will have both R and Stata code in it. Um, he has parallel versions of all of his, his code, um, which is cool, but we don't have access to it yet. It doesn't exist yet. And so we just have the free Stata version our Stata code version. Um, but there's also math and stuff in here. The math can get really dense in this book. And so if you get lost, it's OK. Um, the math isn't incredibly important for this class. Um, Mastering Metrics by Josh Angrist and Jorn Stefan Pischke um, is helpful. It is less mathy than one of their other books. Um, one, their most famous book is called Mostly Harmless Econometrics. Um, that if you've ever taken any econometrics class, um, that's kind of the core Bible version of econometrics for um, most people. Um, but it's very mathy. It has all sorts of equations. This is the less mathy version of it. Um, and so I'm having you do this one because it's great. Um, and then impact evaluation is pretty accessible too. Um, so the only one you have to buy is this one, and it's fairly cheap because it's just a, a little paperback. Um, not a huge hardcover textbook that is like $200. Um, so again, the philosophy of my class here is to not get bogged down so much in the scary equations. Um, so this right here is kind of the goal. Um, this right here is instrumental variables regression. And this is what you would see in a book like Co the Causal Inference Mixtape or Mostly Harmless Econometrics or any other econometrics book. Um, I'm not going to care about this stuff. You will not have to recreate any of this math stuff on a test or anything. Um, what we're going to do instead is this. This is the code version of that. Um, I will show you how to code this stuff um, and interpret the results. We will talk about kind of the intuition behind the math um, because that is important, but the actual, like, how to interpret each one of these letters and Greek letters and the hats and the negative one, like, I don't care about that for this class. Um, so don't worry about that. This is where we're going to be focusing most on. Um, the technology we're using is R, as I mentioned before, um, and R Studio. So there's a slight difference between the two. R itself is a statistical programming language that just runs on your computer. If you install R, um, and then open up a command prompt or a terminal. You can type the letter R, hit enter, and then you can start doing stats, um, just like in the terminal. Um, but that gets really tedious. You can't actually see graphs from your terminal. You can't do much there, but that's where it runs. RStudio, on the other hand, is a thing that sits on top of R. So when you install R on your computer, you have to install both of these things. R itself, which is kind of the engine, that does all of the statistical calculations. And then R Studio, that is kind of the car around the engine. It lets you do stuff with R. Um, this division is fairly familiar if you use Stata. Um, so Stata has kind of a console down in the bottom um, where you actually run the commands and it shows the output. But everything else around Stata, like the menus and the sidebars and all of that stuff, that's not like core Stata. That's not the thing that's running the calculations. That's just kind of extra stuff. So that's what RStudio is as well. It's just kind of this extra stuff around the core R thing that runs R. So that, that's what we're focused on in this class. You'll be working with both. You'll never run R completely by itself. You'll always open RStudio and then run R that way. Um, you'll also learn about this here. This is called the tidyverse. So one of the reasons R is so popular is because 
um, people can write their own packages for R, which are extra functions um, that let you do fun things. Um, so if you are not happy with the default way that R creates plots, for instance, like default R plots are kind of ugly um, and are kind of difficult to work with. The syntax is weird. Um, other people have written other plotting libraries. For instance, there's a library called ggplot that is a whole bunch of different packages that um, or different functions that lets you make prettier plots and have a kind of a more human readable syntax um, for um, creating stuff. Um, so what the tidyverse is, is, is a whole bunch of different packages that all work together um, to make it easier to work with data um, because it makes it more English-like and makes it more kind of grammatical and natural language-like. Um, and so these packages do different things. ggplot makes plots. dplyr lets you um, d work with data. You can create new columns. You can um, make groups and summaries. Um, you can filter. You can select specific columns. You can do a whole bunch of stuff like that. Reader lets you read stuff um, from, from um, CSV files. There are packages that let you read things from SPSS or from Stata or from SAS or from Excel. Um, tidyr lets you... Um, um, change data sets from like a wide format to a long format and vice versa. So all these packages do different things. Um, it's called the tidyverse because it's kind of a universe of packages that all adhere to this tidy data principle that we'll, we'll talk about in a few weeks. Um, but they all just kind of work together to make data easier to work with and make R easier to work with. Um, another way of thinking about it is this right here. Um, when you are working with computer languages, um, you can either be super close to machine language and you could actually like program entire programs in just like ones and zeros. And that's going to be exceptionally tedious. Nobody does that. Um, and so we abstract those ones and zeros and that scary stuff to kind of other languages. And so if you learn a language like C++, um, that's going to be really obscure syntax, but it lets you kind of work with the machine. Base R, just normal R without any packages, um, is fairly English-like, um, but it still has some weird syntax issues. Um, it has lots of um, brackets and curly braces that you have to work with. Um, so what I like to do is I like to teach people the tidyverse, which is still R. When you're learning R, like this is still just regular R stuff. It's just kind of extra functions in R to make it closer to human language. Um, and to make it easier to read, even if you've never programmed anything in your entire life. So an example of this is this code right here. This is our code um, based on different tidyverse packages like dplyr that lets you create new columns and filter things, and then ggplot that lets you plot things. So without, even if you've never used R before in your life, you should be able to read this and figure out something that's gonna happen. So it looks like we have this bird strikes something, and then we're grouping it by month, and then we're figuring out total damages and average damages, probably by month. If we look at the plotting here, it says we're going to plot that strike damages by month. The x-axis is gonna have the month on the x-axis. Um, damages is gonna be on the y. This geom call probably means column. It does. Um, and then we're gonna have the labels on the y-axis be dollars, and here's all of these different labels we've added. So without even running this, you can probably imagine what this plot is going to look like in your head, even if you've never used R before. There's no, like, this is just verbs, like English verbs, group and summarize and plot, and that's, like, really cool. Um, and so most of the most of the, the coding that we'll be doing in this class will look like this, and you'll get lots of practice with this. Um, there are interactive videos and um, interactive websites that I'll have you use. Um, you'll have practice with your problem sets. You'll have access to me through Slack and through email. Um, I will help you with this. Um, but this is kind of the stuff that you'll be doing in this class. Um, an important caveat about all of this is you will suck at this initially. Um, and that is completely normal. Um, so there's this quote here by Hadley Wickham. He's um, one of the main R developers in the tidyverse package world. He invented ggplot and a whole bunch of others um, in that tidyverse world. And what he says is that there's no way of knowing nothing about a subject, like most of you with R, um, to knowing something about a subject without going through a period of much frustration and suckiness. Um, and his advice and my advice is to push through. You'll suck less at the end. 
um, you will get frustrated as you're doing your problem sets. You will get frustrated as you're trying to figure this stuff out. Everybody gets frustrated. That's just the nature of working with computers. Computers are really dumb. Um, you will often um, miss a comma somewhere and spend an hour trying to figure out why your script won't run, and then you'll find the comma and put it in, and then you'll feel really dumb. Um, this happens to me all the time too. I've been using R for like 10 years now and I will still find awful dumb mistakes. Um, everybody does. Um, that's just the nature of this thing. And so the only way of getting sort of good at R and getting better at this is to suck. And it's okay to do that. There's this, there's this whole academic research world of looking at the effect of, of sucking at stuff. And it's a sign that you're learning and it's a sign that you are growing. Um, so just be prepared for that. It will be rough initially, but I promise you will get through. I've taught R to hundreds of students at this point, um, ranging from like 18 years old to I had a 70 year old in one of my classes at BYU and she was able to learn R and like made really cool maps and stuff and like she did it um, and you can all do it too, I promise. Um, and again, like my goal here, I'm not trying to make you computer scientists. Um, that is not what I'm trying to do. Um, a good analogy of this uh, for this is like you don't have to be a mechanic to drive a car safely. Um, it's helpful to know about different parts of the engine um, if it breaks. I know nothing if my car breaks, even if like the oil is low. I have no idea where to even check the oil. I just wait until the light goes on and then I go to Jiffy Lube and sit there while they fix it. I'm trusting that they're doing it. I have no clue what they're doing, um, but I can still drive a car. Um, and so that is also what I'm trying to have you do in this class. You don't need to be a programmer or a developer or a computer scientist to use R safely. You can still learn R stuff and be proficient in it and you can do stats um, without being an expert at every little plumbing thing behind the scenes. Um, importantly, when you're learning R, um, it is 100% okay to use Google. Um, I expect you to use Google. Everybody does. Um, there's this tweet here from a data scientist who shows that process. Like the way you learn R is you install it and then you Google stuff. Um, do not feel bad. Um, for whatever reason, I have students every semester who email me and they, or in their problem sets, they will mention, I did this entire thing without looking up a single thing in the help pages or without trying to go to Google. And I've had students complain like this assignment took me 20 hours because I did not look anything up. Don't do that. You can look stuff up. I promise it is 100% okay. Um, everybody does. The help files exist so that you can look stuff up. Some of like some of these functions like ggplot will have like 15 or 20 or 30 different arguments you can put in the function. You will never remember them all. Um, it is 100% okay to have the help page up and look at it, to look at other examples. Um, there's a cool website that you will stumble across called Stack Overflow, um, where people ask questions about programming and then other people answer those questions. It is 100% okay to look at Stack Overflow and see what other people are asking and answering. Um, there are forums for R. Um, there's an R Studio community where you can ask questions and you can see other people's questions. Um, there, uh, there's just Google in general. Um, I would highly recommend asking questions about different problem sets on Slack, um, but not messaging me directly. You can feel free to message me privately, but do it publicly. Um, because other people can either respond to your questions or um, other people will be able to see responses to your questions and they can learn from that as well. Um, it is 100% okay to ask questions publicly, to get answers to questions publicly, um, Google stuff, look stuff up in the documentation. Do not have a goal to write our code without looking at anything. Um, that unless you really care about like, don't do it. I promise it's not going to be useful. You need to look at stuff and it is 1000% okay to look at stuff. Um, so my main takeaway from all of this is you can do this. You can learn this stuff. Um, I am here to help you. I am here to make it so that you can do this stuff to provide all the support that you need to learn this. And I promise you can do it. Um, so the goals for this class, 
in um, summary here. It is not to become an expert with R. Um, and in, instead, it's to be able to speak and to do causation, to be able to legally talk about causal stories, um, the causal effect of a program on some outcome. Um, hopefully, you'll be able to design rigorous evaluations by the end of this class so that after you graduate, um, you can go work and help people design good ways of measuring causation. Um, that is the whole point of this class. And then kind of the, the broader uh, part of this is Ideally, you can go out and change the world with data. Use all of that data that's swimming out in the public sector and do some good with it. Prove causation with this data. Um, prerequisites for this class, finally. Um, math skills, if you can do basic algebra, you're good. Um, and that just means like you can rearrange equations to move an x to a different side of an equal sign. That's all the algebra you'll need. Um, computer science skills, none. If you've never programmed in your life, awesome. If you have programmed, awesome. Um, some of you may have taken classes with me before, like a data visualization class or a statistics class. Um, in that case, you've got a head start because you've done R already. If you have never touched R before, it's fine. You will get exposed to it and you will learn this stuff. Statistical skills, um, the main stuff you need to know for this class is how to interpret a regression model. Um, how to figure out the difference in means, like what a t-test is, how to interpret a t-test, and then what the notion of statistical significance is. So if you see a p-value, what is that p-value? Um, as long as you can do those things, you'll be good for this class. If you can't do those things, um, we're actually going to review this in a couple weeks and give you kind of a, a good foundation for this if you've forgotten, if it's been a few years since you've taken stats. Um, so you will you should be okay. Um, so hopefully if uh, the main thing I want you to take away from kind of this section here is you can do this. I am here for you. Um, you will learn some fun and exciting things that should be useful after you're done with this class. Um, these are marketable skills. I've had students get jobs because they know R. They've been able to put it on their resumes and say, I can do analysis in R, I can do causal inference with R, I can do program evaluation with R. I've had students apply for fellowships at JPAL and other places. Um, you have, you'll have these tools to be able to do these really fun and exciting things. So let's get started.